Now that you have some background on how to model a dynamic system, we can see how to program it into Simulink. First open MATLAB and verify that you have the Simulink package installed by typing the letters VER for version into the command window. This will tell you all of the add-ons and toolboxes that you currently have installed. If Simulink is installed, then you can just type Simulink into the command window to launch the program. A landing page should open up and you should have the choice to open existing files, templates, or blank models. Let's start by clicking the blank model option. A window opens with a toolbar at the top and a blank white space below. This is analogous to the MATLAB script or M file where you can save lines of code to be executed at a later time. Simulink is a graphical programming language and this blank white space is where you drag and drop blocks to build your model. Like an M file, a Simulink model or SLX file can be modified, saved, or run at any later time. You can find a library of blocks by clicking on the library browser icon. This opens up a collection of pre-built blocks that you can use to build your model. There are hundreds of blocks available, but we will focus on the blocks that are essential to programming a dynamic system into Simulink. First click on the Sources submenu. A source is a block from which a signal originates. Notice that all of the blocks in the Sources submenu have an arrow pointing away from the block. Let's start building our first block diagram by dragging and dropping a constant block out into our Simulink model. Then open the Sinks submenu in the library browser. A sink is a block to which a signal terminates. Notice that all of the blocks in the Sinks submenu have an arrow pointing into the block. Let's drag a scope block out into our model. You can connect blocks in Simulink with signals. To connect these blocks together, Hover your cursor over the arrow on the source block until crosshairs appear. Then click and drag the signal to the input arrow on the sync block until the signal turns solid black. This is an indication that the connection has been made. At this point we have successfully created our first simulation in Simulink. It's not very exciting as we are only simulating a constant value. On the toolbar you can change the duration of the simulation by adjusting the simulation stop time. When you're ready to run the simulation, you can hit the play button on the toolbar. If there are no errors, the simulation should finish. To see the result of the simulation, you can double click the scope block. Here our simulation shows a constant value of 1 for the duration of the 10 second simulation. Between the sources and sinks, you can incorporate any number of mathematical operations. For example, Let's bring in another constant source block and adjust the values of the blocks. We can add the two signals together by finding the add block in the math operations submenu. Connect the constant signals to the input side of the add block and connect the output side of the add block to the input side of the scope. Running this simulation verifies that indeed 3 plus 5 equals 8. A gain block is often useful as it performs inline multiplication by a constant value. For example, if we wish to scale a signal, we can use a gain block to do so. Another block that is extremely useful when programming dynamic system equations is the integrator block, located in the continuous submenu. As expected, this block integrates the incoming signal. Notice that the integral of a constant value gives you a line with the slope of that constant value as expected. At this point we have actually learned about all of the blocks required to program our first dynamic system. Source, sync, addition, gain, and integral. However, before we put it all together and simulate the vehicle velocity dynamics that we derived in a previous video, we also need to learn about the relationship between MATLAB and Simulink, which we'll do in the next video.